Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to show you a kind of a neat little trick that we can use to create explosions to simulate what it's going to look like flying through flak. So now this is more of a visual effect than it is an actual physical effect, although if you want to use nuclear flak, um, I would assure you that it'll be very, very effective. So basically here's how we're going to do this. So we're going to create a zone around this little place that's protected by some uh, mobile anti-aircraft artillery here. And then what we're going to do is say if anybody enters that zone, identify who entered the zone, and then afterwards go ahead and uh, basically start creating explosions around them. So the first thing we need to do is basically create the kill zone here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the distance measuring tool here to estimate uh, pretty much to the end of this ring. We're going to call this kind of the maximum zone here. So I'll go ahead and I'll create one here, in reference point here, 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 and here. So I'm going to grab that, and that's basically going to be our uh, boom, boom, boom zone, if you want to kind of think about it another way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Event Editor, go up to Events, and now we're going to go ahead and uh, delete the old one, because uh, the old one, unfortunately, uh, did not work correctly. So then we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a new one. Uh, it seems uh, that one didn't up there it goes got it so now we're gonna go ahead now unit gets flak so the first things first we're gonna make it repeatable we're gonna go down to our little triggers we're gonna edit triggers and we're gonna go ahead and add ourselves a trigger called unit remains in area this simply says that the unit has to stay in this area in order to be engaged so we'll say unit enters area we'll go ahead and switch this out to the other team and we're just going to set it to aircraft because again we're going to be flacking them we're going to go ahead and add that area press ok Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a limit to how often this can happen. So I'm going to go ahead and come down to a regular time. And I'm also going to go ahead and set this to being basically, uh, we could do 15 seconds, we could do 5 seconds. Really doesn't matter, uh, 5 seconds is pretty darn quick for this game. So I'm going to go ahead and press that and close that one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come add these two items to my event here. Come down to event conditions. Another thing I like to do is a scenario has started. Uh, yup. Yayo. And now this is basically just kind of a sanity check here. Make sure the thing has started. Looks good. And now we're going to go ahead and create our action here. We're going to go down to Lewis script, create new action, and now we're going to go ahead and do this. Shoot some flak, yo. But of course, that's not how that works. So basically, this is how it works. We need to get the unit that entered the zone and is our violator. Easiest way to do that, now that I've always liked to you, I'll do something like uh, local unit equals, and it will just say send edit unit x that simply says what unit was the one that went ahead and entered our zone here in this case that'll grab that unit for us now what we're going to do is create a little bit of jitter uh, that's pretty easy to do so i'm just going to call x equals math dot random and we'll say minus one to positive one i know you're probably saying that seems a little weird divided by a thousand there we go now we're a little better we'll go ahead to local y equals math dot random we'll say minus one to positive one divide that by a thousand also and then local z this will be basically elevation math dot random minus one to one divided by a thousand. Now what we have to do is create an explosion now that we've identified who the unit is the violator. And now we've gone ahead and created a little thing here that gives us a basically random position around it. So let's go ahead and do that part now. So I'm gonna say send edit, add explosion, and we're gonna say warhead ID equals. All right, let's see if we can find out a good warhead here. Personally, when I do this, I love 155 millimeter or bigger warheads. They have like, like a nice, like over dramatic bang but it really does not matter what you use here. Again, you can come up here. You want to do 203 millimeter, you know, knock yourself out. It doesn't matter. Oh, you do uh, 54 is going to be a warhead here. You know what? Why not? Warning, by the way, if you do this with nuclear weapons, you will destroy the aircraft. You won't just uh, speckle it and scare the crap out of the guy flying it. So we'll say a lat equals unit dot latitude plus X. Then we're going to say longitude. I think it's L-O-N or L-O-N-G. I'm always trying to remember this one. No, L-O-N. That's right. Equals unit dot longitude. Remember, this is the unit that triggered this. Plus Y. And then we're going to say, uh, let's see, altitude. Equals unit dot altitude. Plus, whoop, yep, I'm right. Z. All right. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and press OK. Let's go out and close this one out real quick. Go ahead and toss that one there. Add shoots of flak, yo. <laughs> I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. And uh, we're looking pretty good. Let me just confirm something real quickly, just mentally for my own sanity here to make sure I didn't blow up. Nope, I'm good. So that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Press OK. Make sure it's repeatable. And let's go. Let's go ahead and test it. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself a victim here. Oh, it looks pretty good. We'll get ourselves some Mark 82s. Press OK. I'm going to go ahead and send them into. Oh, 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 that wouldn't have worked. We need to actually use the other team because remember, they're the ones triggering it. Lucky for me, I already have a bunch of these guys ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and set them down to medium altitude. We're going to go up to cruise speed. Speed things up a little bit here. Uh, they shouldn't be getting any of the little speckly, flacky goodness just yet until they enter into that zone. So uh, let's see if all my calculations uh, worked out here. I always like to add debugging statements and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure this will work okay. All right. If you're wondering why I'm dividing that number by a thousand, by oh, there it is. See it? See it? 
<laughs> Isn't that awesome? So now they're getting uh, little flak bursts as they're kind of ripping around here. Is this the coolest thing? So Corey's just sitting here going, how come it's only attacking him and not his buddies? Well, this is considered a group. So if I actually delete the group, now everybody's going to get popped at. But it's actually pretty funny because only the uh, first person who enters the zone is actually the one that's going to be attacked. Oh, oh, geez, these guys are getting... <laughs> Look at that. They're getting blasted everywhere because remember, only a single unit could be uh, triggering that particular thing at a time. So unfortunately, uh, this is kind of the lucky guy and you can actually follow the little flak bursts across the sky as he goes out uh, chasing after him, which I think is just, oh, that's so much fun. So anyway, uh, this is, like I said, a brief little scenario in order to have a little bit of fun here. Uh, what we will do is we'll switch to nuclear weapons uh, just to demonstrate if you have to be that guy. And what happens if we try to hit them with a nuke instead? You know, just, I mean, I got a couple moments, right? Let's see, nuclear, nuclear. I don't know, we're going to need something that goes bang. Uh, KH-22, I don't need anything that big. Uh, here we go. The Genie. Mm, let's do it with 25 kilotons. That seems fair. All right, what do we got here? We have 248 as our device and prepare to obliterate everything. Let's go down to this. Again, we're having a little bit of fun here because we can. Let's just change this to 248. Put my comma back that I just knocked out. Press OK. Close. Close. Uh, let me make sure that didn't accidentally. Edit. Edit. Get okay, my 248. Yes, it did. I don't always trust that because there's no OK button. It always makes you nervous. Press OK. Boom! <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> and that, my friends, is why you don't uh, use nuclear flak. It's, um, it, uh, yeah, uh, I believe they call that collateral damage. I think that's the word for it. All right, folks, uh, hopefully this video is helpful as far as coming up with a neat little visual effect that you can add to your little scenarios. Again, there's a bunch of variations on this because remember, multiple things triggered it at one time and only gives us the most recent trigger. And again, it's all super duper cool how that all works. Enjoy.